four different types of hypersensitivities. And the second type, or type 2 hypersensitivity, is sometimes called cytotoxic hypersensitivity because a lot of disorders caused by this hypersensitivity involve antibody-mediated destruction of healthy cells. These disorders tend to be tissue-specific, meaning that the antibodies are generally specific to one type of tissue or organ. There are other antibody-mediated hypersensitivities that are systemic, but these are generally type 3 hypersensitivities. So our immune system is set up to fight anything that's considered non-self, right? Anything that's not self, or you. This works in large part because of a process called central tolerance, which is when developing immune cells that are self-reactive get destroyed or inactivated, whereas immune cells that aren't are allowed to survive. And this happens while they're still in their primary lymphoid organs, which is the thymus for T cells and bone marrow for B cells. This process though isn't perfect, and some self-reactive B and T cells will escape. These escaped self-reactive cells can then attack healthy tissue, which results in an autoimmune disease. In type 2 hypersensitivity, these escaped self-reactive B cells become activated and produce IgM, or with the help of CD4 positive T helper cells, IgG antibodies that attach to antigens on host cells. And there are two types of antigens involved with type 2 hypersensitivity. Intrinsic, meaning an antigen that the host cell normally makes, or extrinsic, which is an antigen from an infection or even some medications like penicillin that gets attached to the host cell. Alright, so let's say a drug like penicillin binds to a red blood cell. Well, it becomes an extrinsic antigen. An IgG, or more rarely, an IgM antibody that's penicillin-specific might bind to the penicillin molecule, creating an antigen-antibody complex. Now, it's worth mentioning that antigen-antibody complexes can happen in the course of a normal infection, but it's when an antibody is complex to host tissue that things start to become a problem. The first cytotoxic mechanism of type 2 hypersensitivity is activation of the complement system. The complement system is a family of small proteins that work in an enzymatic cascade to fight off bacterial infections using a variety of mechanisms. In this case, the IgG or IgM antibodies activate complement proteins, which ultimately will kill the red blood cell bound to penicillin, which is complex now with IgG or IgM. Alright, so the process gets started with C1, the first of the complement proteins, which binds to the FC portion of the antibody. C1 then engages other members of the complement family, C2 through C9, some of which are activated by being cleaved or chopped by an enzyme. The cleaved fragments, C3A, C4A, and C5A, act as chemotactic factors, meaning they attract certain cells, in this case, neutrophils. Once neutrophils join the party, they degranulate or dump a bunch of enzymes like peroxidase, myeloperoxidase, and proteinase 3, which all help generate little oxygen radicals that are highly cytotoxic to cells and can cause tissue damage. When it comes to drug reactions like penicillin, Type 2 hypersensitivity can result in hemolytic anemia, sometimes called autoimmune hemolytic anemia, as well as thrombocytopenia or neutropenia, since these are all blood cell types that are often affected. This mechanism is also involved in diseases like good pasture syndrome, where antibodies bind to intrinsic antigens on collagen of the basement membrane in their glomeruli in the kidney or their alveoli in their lungs rather than extrinsic antigens in the penicillin example. The second cytotoxic mechanism requires us to follow the complement system through to the end. That said, C5B, C6 through C8, and a bunch of C9 come together to form the membrane attack complex, or MAC. The MAC attacks the cell by inserting itself into the cell membrane, punching a hole or creating a channel that allows fluid and molecules to flow in and out of the cell. And this is not good for the cell's overall health, right? Because due to the osmotic difference, fluid rushes into the cell, and the cell swells and eventually bursts, called cell lysis, and it dies. And that's the second mechanism, and this is where the name cytotoxic comes from. In our example, if you suspect autoimmune hemolytic anemia, the antibody in question can be detected using a direct Coombs test. In the direct Coombs test, the person's red blood cells are separated from the plasma and then mixed with Coombs reagent, which is anti-human globulin, basically an antibody against human antibodies. If the red blood cells agglutinate or clump up, 
that means that they probably had antibodies on their surface. Besides a direct test, there's also an indirect Coombs test, which is usually done to check for blood group incompatibility. For an indirect Coombs test, the patient's serum is mixed with laboratory red blood cells that have known antigens on their surface, and then once again mixed with Coombs reagent. If there is red blood cell agglutination, that indicates the presence of antibodies or complement in the serum. The indirect Coombs test is done to determine if you have antibodies before you're exposed to the antigen. For example, this could be like a mismatched blood transfusion or a second pregnancy with a mismatched RH factor between the mother and the child. Alright, so the third cytotoxic mechanism of type 2 hypersensitivity happens when IgG antibodies coat a blood cell that are bound by C3B, another one of those complement protein fragments. At this point, we say that the cell has been opsonized, which means it's targeted for phagocytosis which is where they get engulfed and destroyed by phagocytes like macrophages and neutrophils. Once opsonized, the antibody-antigen complex in the cell it's attached to encounters a phagocyte in the body's blood filtration organ, the spleen, and the phagocyte targets the cell by binding to the FC tail of the antibody or the C3B bound to the IgG. Then it engulfs and destroys the cell. Alright, so the last three mechanisms involve the complement system in one way or another. The last couple mechanisms are a little different. So the fourth mechanism is called antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, or ADCC. In this case, the bound antigen-antibody complex gets recognized by immune cells called natural killer cells. The natural killer cell recognizes the FC tail of the antibody and releases toxic granules. These granules contain perforins, which just like the MAC, form pores in the cell, except that this time the pore also allows entry of enzymes that are like these silent assassins called granzymes as well as granulysin, which work together to cause cell death in an apoptotic or quiet death sort of way, such that there's no surrounding inflammation. Okay, so far all the mechanisms have led to cell death or cytotoxicity, right? There are though non-cytotoxic type 2 hypersensitivities as well, where the antibody just sort of disrupts function, called antibody-mediated cellular dysfunction. Sometimes when an antibody binds to its antigen, it just sort of gets in the way. When this happens, it can change the way the cell is supposed to function. This is the case in the autoimmune disease myasthenia gravis, where antibodies specific for the acetylcholine receptor in muscles simply blocks the binding of acetylcholine, which causes the muscles to not get stimulated and progressively weaken over time. This mechanism is also involved in Graves' disease, where antibodies target receptors that stimulate thyroid hormone production. But in this case, they not only get in the way, they actually activate the receptors, causing overproduction of thyroid hormone, or hyperthyroidism. And there you have it, a handful of different ways that antibody binding to cells can cause them to get destroyed or become less effective. The important things to remember about type 2 hypersensitivity is that they're antibody-mediated, they generally lead to cytotoxicity, and they're tissue-specific. 